Repentance. What is it? And do I have to do it in order to be saved? Let's talk about that. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Jeff. I make videos just like this nearly every week to make faithful followers of Jesus and equip them to change the world. If that sounds like what you're looking for, subscribe to this channel so you never miss a video. And make sure you're following me over on Twitch. I stream over there at twitch.tv slash drhills every Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And I'd love to hang out with you guys sometime. So let's talk about it. Repentance. What is it? Well, in essence, it means to turn away from your sin and turn towards God, right? The more biblical definition is to actually change one's mind. To change one's mind, to change your mind from one thing to another. So to repent means you would literally facing one way and you would turn to face another. And so often when we talk about repentance, we talk about turning away from our sin and turning toward God. Now the very first thing we have to do in repentance is we have to acknowledge our sin. And I think this is where a lot of of Christians today are falling short is they don't want to acknowledge their sin. They enjoy it, so they don't want to say, hey, that's wrong. I don't need to do that. I don't need to be into this. How can that be wrong when it feels right, when I'm enjoying it, when it makes me happy? How can that be wrong? You see, we, we have to first look at our lifestyles and put them against the Bible, right? We have to look at our sin and put it against the Bible. And, and to turn away from our sin may be painful and it may be uncomfortable and it may not be what we want to do, but if we're going to draw closer to God, it's what we must do. Now imagine with me for just a moment, go with me. Uh, there's a story in the Bible uh, about a man uh, who was actually persecuting Christians. His name was Saul. Now Saul was going around and he was, he was a, a religious leader and he was acting um, on the side of the Jews and he was going and finding Christians and having them arrested, sometimes even stoned like in the case of Stephen in the book of Acts. So Saul was going around and he was hunting and persecuting Christians. And one day he was on his way to Damascus and, and Jesus showed up to him as a bright light and he fell off of his horse and, and he hit the ground and he was immediately blinded. Now Jesus then instructed him to go to the next town and wait there for help. Then Jesus appeared to a man named Ananias and he says, Ananias, Saul is over a couple houses down and he's waiting for you to come help him. And Ananias goes, whoa, Jesus, do you know this guy? He's a bad dude. You sure you want me to do that? And Jesus said, like, yeah, do it. And so Ananias does, he goes over and, and he heals Paul, as you probably know him now. He heals Paul and Paul is able to see and, and they come together and Paul gives his life to Jesus and, and, and they pray together and they join together in fellowship. And then Paul cuts Ananias' head off because he's a Christian. Okay, for the record, that last part didn't happen. He didn't actually kill Ananias. But imagine for a moment, what if he did? What if he did? You would say, Paul's no Christian. He's not living like a, a Christian. He's living exactly like he was before. Yes, now you're getting it. Now you're getting the point. Exactly. When one accepts faith in Christ, we expect to see a difference. We expect to see repentance, that they turn from their dark ways and turn toward the light. If Paul, after salvation, then turns around and kills Ananias, we don't believe he's saved because his life does not reflect the change that has happened. If we are a Christian, if we are following Jesus, there should be repentance. Our life should reflect the decision that we have made to follow Jesus. You see, it's not that repentance is necessary necessary for salvation is that it's evidenced in salvation. That once you are saved, once you commit your life to Jesus, there should be evidence of Jesus in your life. Now it may not be immediate. I'm not telling you that once you surrender to God, you're going to be perfect. That's not how it works. I'm not perfect and I've been surrendered for a bit now. That's not the point. It's that you start to turn. You acknowledge the wrongs in your life. You acknowledge the sin. You acknowledge the imperfections. You acknowledge the temptations. You acknowledge the points where you fall short and you give it over over to God. You turn away. If you want to read about repentance, you need to read in the book of Acts. In Acts in 3.19, it says, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Peter even says, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, that you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In Acts 17, 30, it says, in the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. Repent, turn away from your sin 
and turn toward Jesus. It's not complicated. It's it's not tricky. It's today I'm choosing to read my Bible and not look at pornography. Today I'm choosing not to allow myself to be alone with that person who tempts me and I'm going to allow myself to be led by Jesus. It's today I'm not going to have another drink. Today I'm not going to take another pill. Today I'm going to flush the cigarettes. Today I'm going to get rid of the temptation. Today I'm going to flee and I'm going to turn towards Jesus. It's every day I'm making incremental decisions to come closer to Jesus. Not that I'm perfect today, but that I am pursuing Jesus one step at a time. You see, repentance isn't a a giant leap into heaven. It's one step forward at a time and sometimes you'll slip up and you'll step backwards but it's still every day I'm pushing forward and every day I'm trekking and every day I'm trekking every day I'm hustling uh, y'all get it right every day I'm trying to grow, grow closer and closer to Jesus every day every day that's what repentance looks like it sounds like a big fancy word but really it's I'm leaving the stuff that I know is bad the stuff that is in the Bible the things that the Word of God says is wrong I'm not trying to justify them I'm not looking for different translations and different people's opinions. And and if the Bible says it's wrong, to my understanding, then the Holy Spirit is convicting me and telling me this is wrong because the scripture says so. Also, if the scripture says so and you still don't believe it's wrong, it doesn't matter. It's still wrong. God's uh, opinions does not fluctuate with your feelings. I'm sorry. Someone had to say it. I'm sorry. It had to be me. But God's opinions does not fluctuate with your feelings. Just jot that down somewhere. If the word of God says it's wrong, It is wrong and we need to be turning away from it and turning toward Jesus. Turn toward Jesus. I promise you today, there is no pleasure here on earth that will be as good as what we will get in the end. There is no pleasure here on earth that will fulfill you like the grace of God in your life. There is no pleasure or temptation or sin or fulfillment that this world promises you that will make you feel as good as a relationship with Jesus. Because listen to me, and I promise you this, sin will always lead to destruction. If you take nothing else from this video, sin will always lead to destruction. I don't care what it looks like today. It may look like fun. It may look like just being one of the guys. It may look like just doing what makes me happy and what I feel is right. And really, it's okay because who is it really hurting? Because it will always lead to destruction. Look at any sin. Every single sin leads to addiction. Look at drugs. They are bound to addict you. Look at sexual sin. It is bound to addict you. Look at lying and stealing and cheating. It is bound to addict you because Satan does not want you for a moment. He wants you for a lifetime. So stop today. Turn your attention to Jesus and pursue him every single day. Make that conscious effort to flee from the temptation that is holding you back and pursue Jesus with every single ounce of your being. Pursue his name. It's not easy, friends, but it is so worth it. I promise you that. Coming from someone who still struggles and still fails, but I repent and I turn and I choose Jesus every single day. And we're in this journey together. And we will not be perfect till we're on the other side. But we have to make those decisions every single day. So is repentance necessary for salvation? I do not believe that you need to have repentance to earn salvation. However, I believe upon salvation, your repentance will be evident in your life. That upon salvation, you will begin to turn away from your sins and turn toward Jesus. And if you're not already doing that, Reflect on your life and make that decision today. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. And remember, I stream over on Twitch every Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, pretty late at night. So if you want to come over and chat about this video or anything else we've talked about on the channel or, you know, just hang out for a little while and be friends, uh, you're welcome to do so. Literally, any Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, uh, pretty late at night. Guys, I appreciate y'all. Remember to sub to the channel, and I'll see y'all next week. Keep living that bold life.